This podcast contains swear words. Hello, wonderful art makers of the world. Welcome to Talking Shit with Tara Cheyenne. I am your host, none other than, you guessed it, Tara Cheyenne. And this is a podcast about art making, about living well, about not giving up. I'm looking at you and living as well as we possibly can in the process. And sometimes it's not that easy, but you're doing great. You really are. I'm an art maker, and most of the folks that I interview on this show are art makers, but the themes and issues we discuss here apply to all of us, whether we consider ourselves artists or not, because life is a creative act. I am recording this podcast on the unceded, stolen ancestral territories of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish nations on the west coast of Turtle Island. And I am so grateful to be a guest on this land. Okay, before we get started, I just want to ask you, as I always do, I'm kind of embracing my repetitiveness as I age. (laughs) You've heard it before, you're going to hear it again. Please star, rate, review, like this podcast. Reviews really do help because they make the old algorithms find the podcast easier. So folks who are looking for podcasts about performing and performance and art making and all these wonderful people that I interview, it's easier for them to find. Uh, You can also just tell somebody with the old analog mouth instrument that you may have access to. That's cool too. And if you have the inclination and the means to donate, every little bit helps. We do support the artists that come onto the show. You can go to terrashyan.com and upper right-hand corner, click that donate button. We'll put that link right in the show notes. Mm. My guest today is Star Marenko. Star is the co-artistic director of Raven Spirit Dance here in so-called Vancouver. And Star is a mother and dance artist, a choreographer, and most interested in the stories that we carry within our bodies and ancestral connections to land that transcend time and space. Her work has been shared locally and nationally, including at the Dance Center, Talking Stick Festival, Coastal Dance Festival, Dancing on the Edge, Native Earth Performing Arts, Wasaki Chuck Begins to Dance, Impact Festival, and Infringing Dance Festival. And she will be in more places, and we will link to some of STAR's upcoming projects in our show notes. Star Marenko, welcome to Talking Shit with Tara Cheyenne. I'm really so delighted to have you on the show. (laughs) I know a lot of folks are really interested in your journey as an artist and what you're doing. And here we are, March 2024. How did we get here? (laughs) Yep. I know you just came off a project. So maybe before we get into your like, what brought you to this career? Yeah. (laughs) What have you been doing lately? What's been going on lately? Yeah, so Raven Spirit Dance, where I'm the co-artistic director with Michelle Olson. We just finished a small tour with Confluence, which is a group piece that we created many years ago with many different artists. And it's just one of those pieces that feels so good to dance together with all of those beautiful women. And and I think the audience also has such a good feeling when they witness all of it. So it's just overall, it was really great. We were over on the island and then came back to Vancouver and then literally just a couple of days ago, I finished the Coastal Dance Festival with the dancers of Dam Hamid. And my son Sammy danced for the first time on his own with me. Um, because before the pandemic, we were always dancing with, he was so little, so I would just hold him and carry him. But yeah. he actually like got up there and, and danced and, you know, holding my hand still, but he had his shakers rattle going and he just, he loved it. I couldn't actually get him off stage at the end. <laughs> but yeah, he did great. I really was so proud of him. So we danced uh, two days together there. Oh my God, that's like, <laughs> as a mother myself, I'm like, oh, how old is he? He's six now. Oh. Yeah, he's six in grade one. And um, and he danced so hard. The last dance, he lost one of his moccasins. Oh, he wow. He went off stage, with, <laughs> left one of the moccasins. He danced a moccasin <laughs> off. 
the dance to box it off. But yeah, we had a lot of fun together. And it's just, it's a really special thing that we get to share together now. So, so yeah, my mama heart is definitely happy. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. When our children want to participate in what we do and who we are is so. Totally. Is so special. My child is 12 and. um Yeah. We're getting into the like, yeah, whatever, whatever, mom, whatever, <laughs> which is like, oh, no. <laughs> totally. A lot of friends tell me that, too. It's just enjoy it when they're little and they want to just be with you all the time. And Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. Confluence is such a gorgeous, gorgeous work. It struck me like there's, I don't know, a few times in our careers where we perform or work on a piece for like years like how has that been for you because it's been I can't remember when you first did that work yeah it's been like I mean in terms of a creative process it's been like a good decade I would say a bit you know about 10 years and then we were supposed to premiere it right before COVID hit and then literally like a week after we were having our tech residency, the whole world shut down. So then yeah. it became, you know, a dance on film for a while and then um, a work in progress in different ways. And then we finally premiered it, I guess, two or three years ago now at Dancing on the Edge. And um, and now it's continued. It's, you know, has a life of its own. And we never really in the beginning thought it was going to be a piece. We were gathering in the studio more to share our process and our experience Um you know, together as Indigenous women. And and uh, and then after a few years, Michelle and I were like, I don't know, do you think it's a piece? Is it not a piece? And then we just gave ourselves, you know, okay, this time we're going to decide, is it a piece or not? And then that's how it came to be. Oh, I feel like Tasha talked about that somewhat. Yeah. But just hearing you talk about that, it's so, um, I don't know, like beautiful and impactful and kind of goes like subversive to the coming at a work, not from, well, we got to make a thing. Yeah. Yeah. But from that sharing place. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it really like still kind of ripples out in the actual piece now that we do share on stage because it's all of those layers, all of those conversations, all of life that happens in 10 years, you know, together. Right. And so I think that that translates for sure into the movement and into the experience that the audience has. Oh, that's so good. Mm -hmm. It's also that thing, you know, how you know how in dance, the whole like, you know, youth and virtuosity, mm. like you're supposed to get held in this one moment in time. Yeah. But creating work that does like move with life and all the things that happen. Totally, totally. And like even the age range of the women who dance in the piece is like, you know, 20s up until 50s. You know, babies have been born during this time. People have died you know people have been married people have been divorced like you know all the things right <laughs> right and that um yeah that I think impact and influence us as artists and as women and just you know people and so yeah all of that is confluence feels like because the container was always created from the beginning to hold all of those stories not necessarily to hold a piece it's like the piece is a part of that but it's not the it's not the only not the only thing yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. I had this fantasy when I did a piece called Highgate way back. Yeah. Like 2013. Yeah. My kid was a year and a half, but I had this, it never happened, but I had this, what if we had a piece where there was something built in? So if you had to breastfeed, mm -hmm. that was part of it. If you had to deal with a little meltdown, whether it was your own or your kids, yeah. you know, all those things. That's just like so, so inspiring. Thank you. I feel like when you're saying that, I feel like that's something that Michelle and I talk a lot about just with regards to the company, like how can the company be that kind of space where, yeah, we can have kids on tour, or we can, you know, leave rehearsal early because your kid's sick and needs to get picked up from school, you know, so it's like, it's always a juggle and you're always, you know, feeling maybe that you're not a hundred percent in anything, but <laughs> but at the same time, it's like I, I just really appreciate that we've built a company and a and a circle and a community of artists and and of work that can kind of hold all of that because then we all can I don't know it's like giving each other permission to just show up fully and you know and and sometimes you're feeling really great and having an awesome day and everything's moving along and other days you're just like falling apart but we can kind of you know hold each other and pick each other up and. Yeah, that happens all the time with Confluence, I would say. Like, it happens with all the work, but there's something about Confluence in particular, maybe because it is a group piece. It's not a solo work, which is, you know, a different experience. But um, yeah, we take a lot of turns with shared leadership, both choreographically and also just with holding space in the room and, you know, in the production process. So, yeah. 
Oh, it's a model for all of us to look at and to keep investigating all the all the breath that can be in that. Um, yeah. Yeah. One of the the teachings that really like holds us and holds confluence is from um, Elder Margaret Harris. So she's uh, Margaret Grenier's mom who's who's passed away now. But she would share with us um, when she was with us that the teachings of the geese. And so the goose teaching is that, you know, the way that geese fly together in a V, there's always um, shared leadership with the head goose. And when that goose gets tired, it'll fall back and another one will take the lead. And all of the geese behind the lead goose um, are honking to like, you know, encourage and give support. So it's not even like you're the front. I didn't know that. I know, right? I didn't know that either. And so they're all like honking, you know, to encourage that leader. And if anyone, if one of the geese gets sick and has to go down to the ground, another goose will always go with them as a pair until they're like ready to fly again and join the flock. And so I feel like that's, you know, shows up through images in the piece, but it also is a way that we've sort of embraced as shared leadership in in the piece and in the company too. So yeah, I always remember grandma's teachings about that, about the geese. It's amazing, isn't it? Mm. Um, this is a little bit of an aside, but my kids learning about they're learning about evolution and and my child came home with the like survival of the fittest is BS. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not, it's like survival of the most cooperative, you know, the care. Yeah. I just wrote down goose care, like that. Yeah. You know, these things that animals do intuitively, and I think we do intuitively. But, you know, colonial, capitalist, totally patriarchal. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, this, this individualistic thing, I guess, is, is what I'm saying and how it's not natural. No, it's this uh, false idea that that's where the strength is. And it's not, you know, it, it is where where we're supporting and, and caring for each other. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I love, you know, what Raven Spirit is now is something very much, I think, for all of us to learn from that, like the shared leadership. Mm. and yeah support because everything's hard <laughs> like it's hard to run a company it's hard to be a parent yeah <laughs> it's hard to like you know all the things and yeah yeah knowing that you can come as your whole self I think is pretty potent totally yeah I mean really I think it's 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 everything really yeah 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 I would love to know more because like researching you like how I often have days like this like how am I doing this for a living? Like I've been doing it for a long time, but it's still, it's like, oh my God, this is my job. I'd love to like hear your story or even if there's like highlights to it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I totally relate. I know what you mean, right? It's like Raven Spirits coming up on our 20th anniversary and Michelle and I are like, what? Like, how are we, how are we doing this? You know, like what a blessing to be able to still be doing this. And I mean, I came into it. I actually um, danced when I was growing, you know, as a child, like all the studio kind of stuff. And then I took some time off of dance and was doing other things. And I just, I missed it so much. And I was like, I don't think I can not be dancing. So I, so I auditioned for SFU as a as um, a mature student, you know, even though I wasn't that old. I was in my, what, mid-20s, but they called it mature, right? How is that so, mature student? I know, I know. So I went back as a mature student and um, and I got my degree at SFU. And it was a bit of a confusing time, though, because I was, you know, in the contemporary dance program and I didn't see a lot of uh, representation of Indigenous dance or of other things in my life that I was interested in dancing about. And um, at the same time, though, I met Grandma Harris and I met her. She was in the First Nations uh, student union or student union office or something. She was the elder in residency. And so I met her who then introduced me to her daughter, Margaret. This was, you know, 20 years ago, and I've been dancing now with Don Muhammad ever since. And um, I also met Jeanette at SFU. Oh, we were in the same... That's right. Um, the yes. same time, yeah. And um, I remember seeing a piece of yours, actually, at SFU, too, which I loved. And uh, and so I was at SFU, and then um, still feeling a little bit lost, like, what am I going to do here as a career? And then I went to the Talking Stick Festival with my mom, and I saw Michelle... Olson performed Songs of Chartreux with Cherith, Mark, who was also at SFU. And I I felt like for the first time I saw on stage what I wanted to do. And I didn't have the words to articulate what I was seeing because I hadn't been learning about contemporary Indigenous dance or what that practice even looked like. But I remember saying to my mom and like, whatever that is, like, that's what I want to do. That's what I want my work to be. And so then shortly after, Kara Sue, um, who everybody knows. Yeah. 
to, she introduced me to Michelle because they were dancing together and Kara had seen me at the Coastal First Nations Dance Festival and Michelle was auditioning for her new piece and Kara said, oh, you should audition star. And so that's how that happened. And um, so I auditioned for Raven Spirit and danced with Michelle and we really hit it off. And that was like almost over 15 years ago now. And I feel like that really like meeting Michelle, meeting Margaret, being a part of that family, having the reflection back to me of what an Indigenous dance practice could look like. As we were all trying to figure it out together, like in hindsight, I remember us like, you know, people would say like, is it contemporary? Is it traditional? Is it Indigenous? Or at that time, people were still saying Aboriginal and before that Native. And so it was like all these different names, right? And we were kind of like, what is it we're feeling? What are we trying to express? Um, You know, connecting with other more senior artists who had been doing it for, you know, a bit longer, connecting with our elders, all of those things. So I feel like all of that brought me to where I am today. And we've just kind of continued, you know, with the company. And now here we are 20 years later. But um, yeah, (laughs) that's kind of how my journey would be and how I would describe it. And a lot of people have asked too, like, had I not met Grandma Harris, had I not met Margaret or Michelle, you know, Jeanette, Tasha, like all of these amazing women, I don't think I would be doing what I'd be doing now. I think I would have got lost in the in the in the mix of it and and not really found my space or my place. So yeah, that's kind of how I ended up here. <laughs> oh, it's the web, right? It's the yeah, it's the relationships, hey? Like totally. It's all about relationships for sure. Yeah. How fantastic to like look back and like the right people at the right time. Yeah. I feel like now as like a an older person, if I can be there and somebody young can see that, oh, there's maybe a different way of doing things. It doesn't have to fit into totally like you were saying, like what the contemporary dance is. Yeah. And um, yeah, a friend recently was like, well, contemporary, it just means of now. Right. I was like, yes, totally. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how much is that we learn. I mean, I went to SFU too. The training was lots of greatness there. Yeah. Not to, you know, but there's big gaps. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like it's something that's, you know, it's interesting too, because just as a society or as an arts community, dance community, things are changing so quickly, even like just from five years ago or 10 years ago, you know, or even sometimes like a year ago, right? Everything's shifting and moving and, you know, and dance programs are like starting to acknowledge where maybe some of the holes are or where some of the lack of representation is and trying to kind of balance that out. And so it's definitely like lots of shifting and changing and I think being able to be sort of open and adaptable and and have those relationships like have the people you can kind of go back to and check in and be like is this crazy does this feel a little bit you know off and because otherwise I think that yeah it's changing so quickly and I, I think about that like I don't know you know our elders and people that you know came before us I'm sure that they had their work to do too. That was, you know, things were shifting and changing or whatever was happening politically or, you know, all of that. But for our generation for right now, this is what we're all dealing with, right? Yeah. So this is our piece. And, you know, and those up and coming dancers, you know, that maybe are in their 20s or whatever, I feel like, yeah, we can help them as best we can. And they're going to have their work to do, you know, and and to, um, to carry. But I don't know, there's something maybe comforting in that a little bit for me, you know, knowing that there's like this long kind of legacy and lineage of of artists and of, you know, and and creators. And and uh, it's like we just have our piece to do. You know, that's what we can focus on. Right. And there'll be people after us and there were people before us. And it's just kind of a part of that continuum. For me, I hear like the responsibility. Mm. There's also like a like do your work. Totally. Yeah. And I think we can get, um, I know I can get like, <laughs> solve this problem. <laughs> yeah. And it kind of takes you away from what you need to do. Yeah, totally. Right here. Yeah. 
Yeah, I had um, a couple of weeks or not even, it feels like forever ago. It was literally last week where I was <laughs> feeling overwhelmed you know, with like, it was the show and my kid was getting sick and like, oh, no. and I just, um, you know, had a little cry and then pulled it all together. And I just said to Michelle, I'm like, you know, she's like, how are you doing? And I was like, well, today's my, my chop wood and carry water day. Like, that's what I can do. You know, it was like, going to make some food for my family, do some laundry, like, you know, I'm not going to think about the big strap plan or like next year's touring or whatever. Right. But it was like, that's all I could do that day. And then, and then the next day it shifts, right? Like, mm. you know, it's going to shift. It's not going to stay like that forever, whether you're in like a super high space or like a low space. Right. So I think that that maybe comes a bit with age and experience is you just like, you see those waves, right. And you're like, okay, this is like, we're just going to ride this one a little bit and it, it sucks, but it, this too shall pass. <laughs> so yeah, that's, um, I don't know, just something you shared there just reminded me of that experience last week. Like, yeah, not so long ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Last week, I had a terrible week last week too. I don't know something about last week. <laughs> right. And it was full moon. Uh, so that probably had something to do with right? it too. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And also, and I feel like this is something definitely too, that we look to Indigenous, especially, you know, female identifying, but not just, mm. but what have I been gifted or here's your responsibility from the older, yeah, from the older folks, from the elders, from like really taking that into our bodies. Mm. Yeah. Totally. I mean, a lot of people have probably heard of that teaching of um, that our responsibility is we have, you know, this last seven generations before us and then the next seven generations after us. And even that container, I find really comforting. You know, I'm like, OK, I can go back seven generations, you know, so those are the the women and the people in my family that, you know, that were this I love too. They talk about, you know, that those seventh generation ancestors were dreaming you into being. You were like the most beautiful, amazing dream of those ancestors, like thinking ahead seven generations. And so it's like, oh, okay. So there's like so much comfort in that. And then that grounds me in thinking, okay, for the next seven generations, like the work I'm doing today, I'm not going to live to see all of the ripple effects, but I know that I'm still going to put them out into the world and, you know, and that they'll, they'll ripple out seven generations. And I think too, that helps me just I don't know, maybe put the to-do list in perspective for the day, you know, or just like when you're feeling like all the things, it's just like, okay, let's just like put this in perspective. And sometimes that's easier said than done, but I, I really realize as I get older too, like how important those teachings are and their reason that they've been passed on for generations and generations, right? Because they're true and they, they work <laughs> and they're real and they help you have a bit of a map maybe for life. Yeah, and how to navigate it. We all need that. Yeah. We really do. And I feel like now, always, but I really feel it right now. I'm, yeah. And I think about like as a settler white person, I think about like all the, the silenced grandmothers, mm. you know, just where have those like gaps? Yeah. Those silencing has happened. Yeah. And how can I as an artist and as a, as a mother and as a friend and all the things, mm. you know, try and um kind of listen for you know yeah totally totally yeah because I feel like it's always been there it's been maybe out of necessity or out of even like very real like safety you know which just hasn't been able to be shared as openly but little by little like the it's like the teachings have still been always held and carried and they're just like little by little starting to come out again and so it's like the more spaces or places that can be shared whether that's through like an artistic practice or or hearing a song or reading a book or you know all of those things I feel like they're kind of trickling out again yeah yeah totally mm. you talked about as you were coming out of university and seeing oh like a new way of being a dance artist or like seeing Michelle and mm. I'm so interested in how the form, how we kind of invent or just become by way of making the art, a new form of it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's an interesting question because I think it's like it has and it still continues to kind of be happening simultaneously where it's like trying to describe a form or like how do you even describe it as a presenter or a festival or an artist? Like what is your practice? And so that happening at the same time that we're kind of discovering it as well. Um, and then too, it's not all new. Like, I mean, it's like, what do they say? Everything 
new is old yeah, or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah. Like it's obviously people that have been doing it well before us. But for right now, I think it's just um I don't know, I kinda I kinda love that part right now as an artist of where you just kind of keep honing it in. And you know, and it's like, oh, this is this is a thing actually. Like this is how we open our rehearsal space or like, oh, that's a a pattern that that we do and that's what it means. Or even just like patterns in my own body of like oh, why do I go to that place or that sort of a, a motif I go to or whatever? And so you don't really have that until you have a little bit of experience and can look back on it. And so yeah, I'm enjoying that part of even like seeing like this idea of contemporary Indigenous dance. It is a form, it's an expression, it's a methodology of way of working. And it's something that can reflect back to me when I see my peers doing it. And then also when they also see me doing it. So. Yeah, it is. It is interesting. And and I think, too, like you're saying, you kind of just do it and then the doing it becomes it, whatever it is. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. It's it's I don't know. It's it's one of those questions I kind of every now and then think about. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, what are we doing and what is that? And oh, yeah, I guess that is a thing. So, yeah. Yeah, it's so neat. I'm kind of going back to like dreaming you into being mm. from the ancestors, like you dreaming it into the being of this practice this form this art and then mm. yeah like you say when you, you've done it for a while and then you can kind of go oh oh totally yeah and then we have like younger dancers coming to you know doing training or asking to mentor and it's like how do you do that and then you kind of like oh yeah right how did that happen and so you kind of start to reflect and remember and I don't know we're definitely not in like elder realm yet but we're not like in sort of the young young dancer right I kind of think I don't know are we like maybe aunties or like you know our older sisters or aunties you know where it's like just a little bit of experience that we can share with that next generation and I'm I'm kind of loving that role actually that I'm stepping into more because I I know how impactful that was in my life having you know people that I could go and talk to as as elders or mentors and now that I'm being asked to do that I I, I love it it's like something so yeah, it's uh, it's a big part of my practice now yeah. that I'm really enjoying stepping into. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so beautiful. Hey. Yeah. 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 I think of all the, the folks who helped me, like there's just so many. And just to be able to even, you know, a little bit, the honor of just like passing on the things and then, yeah, you know, might have like, oh, and then I did it like this. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Speaking of getting older, <laughs> um, as I am too, just like as a performer, as a dancer and the, you know, the vulnerability of the body, how is that for you? Are you feeling excited about, you know, continuing to perform? Do you have like things that you do that are really helpful or anything? Yeah, I do feel excited about continuing to perform and I am um, a couple of years ago, I premiered my first full length solo work. Yes. Chapter 21. And I mean, I know you've had lots of solos, but for me, this was my first like full length solo. And I was just like, what the heck am I doing? Like, yay. You know, I'm in my 40s, <laughs> you know, doing this thing, right? And I'm like, wow. But, but I did it and it felt so good and so empowering. And um, yeah, and I, I loved the experience. I loved just finding out what my body wanted to say and how I wanted to say it and, you know, and and going back into the studio and, and even just like preparing for the actual premiere. It was just a really wonderful experience. And I'm like, I don't know, like, would I, I don't, it would have been a different experience when I was in my twenties, you know, I would have danced about something different and and that would have been beautiful too, but it was, you know, this is the time that, that I'm, that I'm wanting to do this now. So yeah, I'm excited about it. When I was at SFU, actually, I remember seeing another solo work by um, Barb, actually from Kokoro and oh, yes. probably, I would say maybe in her fifties then. And it was one of the most beautiful pieces. You know, I remember it to this day. I think it was about her sister. Um, if I remember, I don't remember the name of the piece, but I just was so struck by this beautiful woman in her fifties dancing and moving. And I remember like she wasn't moving in the way that all of my classmates moved, you know, but she was moving in a way that somebody who knew her body that had been in that body and who had, you know, knew those pathways and knew those edges. And it was the most beautiful thing to see. And so I I think about that, you know, sometimes when I'm 
thinking about my solo or if I would do other solo work in the future, even just dancing. I mean, in general, yeah, that's really inspiring. So I think that it's it's about knowing our bodies in a whole different way. Yeah. And there's, you know, all the kind of stuff, of course, it's like you don't quite move the same way <laughs> and, and the aches and pains are different. But but mostly, I would say it's it's mostly um, super exciting to just see what we can do with this body that's, you know, also like gave birth to a human being and like, you know, and, and all this kind of stuff, too. It's it's uh, so I've been I'm enjoying that. Oh, I just love that because I was I was talking to somebody about like my way, way, way back my days when I was a ballet dancer. Yeah. And I remember it was like, oh, you're going to dance till you're 27. Right. The 27 was the age. Yeah. That we were all told is like, oh, crap, I better get this in. Yeah. And then when I became a contemporary dancer. Yeah. It was 35. Yeah. So I'm just like so happy to hear your words of like, I'm excited to keep going. I'm excited how you know your body. Like it's. Just more information. Yeah. Frankly, I just, I love watching the young folks dance. Yeah. I really love watching older yeah. folks dance and seeing all the story in the body. Totally, totally. And I feel like it, how beautiful to have space for all of that, right? Like, I, you know, to not just limit it to only one age group or one body type or one way of moving that we see on stage. Like, I, I really love that it's uh, continuing to just open more and more. Yeah. And I think it gives us all, whether you're a dancer or not, like it gives us all invitation into being in our bodies mm -hmm. and enjoying, right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Do you think you're going to make another solo? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I, I would just, know. I would like to see another solo from you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll see. I've got it's interesting. I've got a couple solos in my um, sort of mind creative, but I don't think they're for me. Oh, okay. I'm working with some folks that I think that that's who they're for. But yeah, I don't know. I'm open to it. I never thought I was going to create this solo that I did. So so yeah, who knows? Maybe. Yeah. Are you going to tour your solo again? So last year I went to Native Earth to Toronto and had a, a week long tour with it, and uh, I kind of intentionally just had the run at Native Earth and wanted to see how I would feel doing it again and being on tour. And, you know, my mom came with me and my son and yes. I was like, how would this feel? And I actually felt really good. I really, I, I did enjoy it and it felt good. And so, yeah, I feel like I might, I don't know when that might happen, but I, but I'm open to it, to maybe remounting it. I, I feel like that's something maybe again, age and time of like, I really love remounting work now you know I feel like there's something about like going back in again and rediscovering it and and even like realizing that it's so funny because we think in contemporary dance like oh I shared it five years ago everybody saw it it's no. like well no you probably had like a half house of 120 or something it's like really not that many people saw it <laughs> we can do it again and so I think I'm I'm enjoying that you know having having repertoire that you can go back to or or you know trying it on with different dancers and um I guess confluence has definitely taught me a lot about that you know how we can continue going back to the work and have different dancers holding it and so yeah I think there's yeah part of it is some new ideas I have and then also I I'm enjoying going back to work again discovering it again oh yeah I love remounting too and like Okay, what has changed? Yeah. Like, what if things have changed for me and totally. the world? And I, yeah. it's very exciting. Or when you solve something, you're like, I didn't even know that was a thing. And now I figured out what that that transition was or whatever, right? Like, and it took me five years, but it's like, you know, now I know what that was about. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's so interesting, hey? Because I'm remounting something right now. I'm remounting body parts, but yeah, the little things I forget. Yeah. And sometimes it's like, Oh, I was supposed to forget that. Yeah. Because I didn't need that line or, you know, that thing or. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's quite a gift. How was it touring like with your son? Okay. Yeah. I mean, thankfully, my mom loves like being on airplanes and hotels and she just thinks it's like, you know, the best thing. Oh, yay, mom. Thank goodness. So, yeah. So, so she, totally. So she comes whenever she's able to, which is like such a gift. And um, and my son, he's a good traveler, uh, Sammy. So that's good. And yeah, it was really, it was really great. It was uh, 
it was a nice, easy swap too. I had a friend who's an actor and him and his wife and their young son were touring in Kamloops and they live in Toronto and it was the exact date. So he's like, just come and stay at our place. And so that was awesome. You know, so we just stayed there and it was all set up. Perfect. Yeah. So that was like a moment of grace for sure. Um, but yeah, it was, it was all right. I, I think the one part that's a bit tricky and I don't know if it ever will change with touring, but it's just like, you're doing double duty the whole time, right? Like you're, you know, you're, you're touring, you're, you're doing the show and you're coming home and then you're mom and you got to be mom because the kid hasn't been with you all. Yeah. Right? And, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, but then, you know, I went on a tour to the Yukon this summer with Confluence and um, Sammy stayed home and uh, it was a totally different experience because I was just there, just me. Right. And with, and it was, it was lovely. I missed him. Like, of course. It was a little too long, right? Yeah. But just that feeling of like, oh wow, yeah, it's 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 really great when he's with me. And I also felt like, wow, I just need to be me and just a dancer. And it was like I, you know, after show, I could just go out and be with the with the rest of the cast and not have to like rush back home. So I don't know. And because I'm kind of like, and now that the world is opening up again and we're touring, I'm starting to think about that. Like, which tours do I bring him on? Which is maybe better for him to not be with me or or even like you know can we do touring differently like yeah. Michelle and I've been talking about that you know and and connecting with people like you know on Vancouver Island or Whistler or like places that are a little bit closer that it's really just sort of you know an overnight kind of thing versus like two weeks on a plane and so just kind of thinking about that and how to travel with kids and and as Sammy gets older too like what am I taking him out of if he's coming on tour with me like you know with school and yeah classes and stuff. So yeah, I think it's always, you know, managing all of that. But for the most part, like how how lucky that I get to do that and get to bring my kid along and that he likes to be there. And yeah. Yeah. It's such a gift. I think it's so good as I like my child has been touring with us since they were, I think, eight months old. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean now we're getting to the point where like ugh, high school's starting next year. So we're, you know, with the right. programs and the classes. But yeah. Like just how much they have learned from from traveling, from helping out, from totally. being in different communities and talking to different folks. And it has been kind of great too for us, I think. Yeah. But I totally resonate when you don't have your child with yeah. you. It's like, <laughs> wait, I just have to figure out what I want to eat. Wow. Totally. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. It was kind of like summer camp for adults, like yeah. those of us who had kids that weren't on tour with us. We're just like, what? <laughs> so yeah, it was it was really lovely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. I love that too. I mean, this has been a soapbox of mine. Just that like we need to include our children. We need to include caregiving and the yeah. the whole landscape of of what we do, of art, that it's not something to, you know, have to hide away and, you know, yeah, madly figure everything out. Um yeah. And I feel too like it's, it's, I mean, it's still mostly on like the parent trying to figure that out. Like it's not, you know, the systems haven't met where we need them to be yet, you know, or even the the funding or just the, I don't know, like I, I think about that. It's starting to change slowly, slowly, slowly. You know, now you start getting asked like, oh, do you need a stipend for childcare, which I never used to get asked for. Right. So that's, yes, that's good. But I feel like kind of just by default, it's like, oh, I'll just figure out the babysitter or so it's that added extra labor just to make a show happen or even just to go see a show. Oh, I was thinking about that the other yeah. day. I was like to actually go out and see a show and make sure I have childcare and make sure I've figured out dinner and like, you know, all of that. Right. It's like it's so much more than just am I free on a Friday night to go see a show. So it's like just lots of things. But I just wonder about that, how we can kind of continue to advocate for working artists parents who are trying to to do this yeah yeah i totally agree it's really vital i'm doing a bunch of research on emotional labor right now oh yeah all these things that are hidden or not acknowledged that are full-on work and who they fall on to who you know who bears that yeah the weight of all that work and if we keep talking about it so that it isn't invisible anymore and that's yeah you know, somehow it gets woven into actually being appreciated and, you know, maybe compensated in some way or, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think like you're saying that it's not hidden, you know, because I think that's where the the exhaustion comes to of just like the constant puzzle in the brain of how this is going to work, yes. right? And like, you know, where are we going to move them and what if, and then 
what happens when like your child gets sick or like you get a call from from the school or you know all those kind of things like there's um yeah it, i think those moments i realize how how precarious the whole thing is really right yeah. because it's like if it's all kind of ticking along you're good this but then podcast this one thing is and the whole thing comes good. crashing really? down and so it's not sustainable and it's yeah yeah no, I don't know what the answer is, but, yeah. but I, I feel it. And, you know, and I, I felt for my friends who were parents before I became a parent, but it's like, I don't think I really got it until that, you know, till that moment. And yeah, so it's, and I still feel, even though Sammy's six, I still feel like I'm so new on the journey too. I'm still trying to figure it out. I don't know. Maybe you never really figure it out, but. I'm six more years into it than you are, but I, yeah. I'd yeah. Say. <laughs> it's also a whole new person totally right <laughs> with a whole new ideas and yeah needs and yeah and I love that part as your kids grow like their universe grows and all of a sudden like you know you know even just dropping Sammy off at school and I'm walking in the halls and he's saying you know giving people high fives and like you know all this kind of stuff I'm like I don't even know who these people are and I love that they're like the community that kind of rallies around him and that loves him you know the the teachers and the grade seven students who are the buddies and with the kindergartners. <laughs> like, oh, I love the buddy thing. Right. I know all of that. And so I, whenever I go to a school assembly or go to something at school, I just kind of see it through his eyes and I'm like, yeah, this is beautiful. He's creating this whole yeah. community around him, you know, to support, it. you know, I'm, I'm there by extension, but it's not being led by me which is, it's pretty cool to see that. That's so cool. I know that the world's just like bloom yeah. communities of our children. They're their communities. And, totally. And we get to, we get to participate in, in our way. Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> I'm aware of your time. I want to make sure that we, cause you got lots to do. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. Yeah. <laughs> a couple things, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're working, mamas, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a couple more questions before we let you go off into your day. Oh, yeah. First of all, is there a question that I didn't ask you that you would have liked me to ask you? That is a good question. Is it so? <laughs> um, no, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm, I'm kind of loving the way everything sort of just flowed. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. What's your next thing so we can we can all look for it? Yeah, well, our next thing, probably, let me see. Well, I'm working on a new piece with Marissa Gold. It's called Tracing Bones, and it's very new work in development, but we're going to be sharing um, something in May, at the end of May, and then also at Dance in Vancouver in November, later this year. And um, Margaret and I are also uh, doing some work with Ballet BC, and we're going to have a little studio showing. Oh, yes. Yeah, in May that we'll be sharing some work there. And then Sammy and I are going on tour. We're going <laughs> We're going on tour for this amazing conference called Dance of the Child International. Oh, I read about that. Yeah, we're doing a collaboration with my friend and colleague Jo Clancy in Australia. She's bringing two girls from Australia and my niece, Taylor, who's nine and who has been bitten hard by the dance bug. Like, she just loves it. It's her whole world right now. Oh, boy. Yeah. So she's going to be collaborating with the girls um, in Australia by Zoom. And then Sammy is so passionate about the drum right now. It's his favorite thing. So we're going to open the piece with uh, me singing and he's drumming. So we're going on tour to Slovenia. Wow. <laughs> Do you believe that? Yeah, it's done, held somewhere every three years in a different uh, country. And Michelle was there with her daughter and, and niece a few years ago when they were in Australia. So anyways, yeah, this year it's in Slovenia. So uh, Sammy and I are hitting the road and he's going to have his first international collaboration. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just like realizing, yeah, I'm just kind of in Sammy's world right now. I'll just be tagging along for his tour this oh, time. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Aww. That's so good. Yeah. We'll link to the stuff that if we're on the west coast of Turtle Island here that we can maybe come and catch. Yeah. Um, and if you're in Slovenia. <laughs> I know, if you're in Slovenia. Yeah. And then and then our website, ravenspiritdance.com, has all that kind of upcoming stuff too. But yeah, it'd be kind of a summer of developing some new work and ideas, which I sort of, I love that too. You know, not big performances, but just kind of some work in progress. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. It's a, it's a great part of what we do, I think. I love the like, yeah, the figuring out, discovering, you know. Yeah, me too. Playing around. Yeah, for sure. That's so good. Yeah. Is there something you do or have been doing these days that is helping you support your creative self 
whether it's like I make these kind of cookies every week or there's, you know, a Netflix special or whatever, anything. Let's see. I would say it's funny. I I think I've just been on like that train of, you know, production mode. So I'm like, but I think what I find, which is a surprise to me, is actually getting up earlier Mm -hmm. because I've never been a morning person. I would always, you know, say, oh, my creative time is at night. And, you know, but being a mom, maybe that's part of it is when everyone's still asleep. Right. And just kind of like stealing out, whether it's going for a walk or going to the gym or just like taking a few deep breaths. I feel like there's something I don't know about that time in the morning, kind of before anyone else is kind of stirring. It's just sort of a, a time when I can quiet my my mind. And yeah, and I think now that the weather's changing, I'm going to just kind of keep embracing that a little bit more too and, and, and getting up. And that's, I would say, kind of carving out a little bit of quiet space for myself before everybody else needs me, I think is, oh, yes. is the way that's working. That's so good. That's so good. Those precious moments. <laughs> Yeah, totally. <laughs> thank you so much, Star. This has been super fun. Well, thank you. I look forward to having you back on. But I've got more questions. Anytime. <laughs> I always have more questions. We'll put all that uh, info in the show notes so people can follow you and, and hopefully see you perform. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's been fun. Thank you. Okay, bye. And that's a wrap of episode 49. Thank you so much, Star, for the great conversation. I've been wanting to talk to you for ages, and it is a privilege and a delight to finally kind of make a connection, which happens a lot. You know, in life, we see each other in the hallways, like, oh, hey, we see each other perform, but we don't take the time or don't have the time sometimes to sit down together. So I feel super lucky. And thank you so much for listening and continuing to listen as we approach episode 50. We got a special one for you, so do stay tuned for that. And please get in touch. We are on Instagram, at TerraShyanTCP, Facebook, for those of you who still use Facebook, other than my mom, TerraShyan Performance, and email. I do still love an email. Info at TerraShyan.com. And again... Donate if you can, even a little bit does help. The link is in the show notes and get in touch. Talking Shit with Tara Cheyenne is a project of Tara Cheyenne Performance, produced, edited with original music by Mark Stewart. MarkStewartMusic.com. You can get in touch with him. And I will leave you today with a quotation from poet and teacher June Jordan from Soul Script Our Earth is round. And, among other things, that means that you and I can hold completely different points of view and both be right. The difference of our positions will show stars in your window I cannot even imagine. Your sky may burn with light while mine, at the same moment, spreads beautiful to darkness. Still, we must choose how we separately corner the circling universe of our experience. Once chosen, Our cornering will determine the message of any star and darkness we encounter. Be well. Keep making shit up. See you next time. This podcast is effing good. good.